Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <gülüyor> من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم النكاح من سنتي فمن رغب عن سنتي فليس مني وكما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله بإذنك الله تبارك وتعالى وانسكين وابكي لنا سنة فتشونيتي تو gather uh, in his house to respond to the command which he gave to all the believers in the Quran where Allah say Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu idha nudhiya li salati ni yun al-jum'ati fas'aw ila dhikri lahi wa dhu al-bay'i thalikum khairu lakum in kuntum ta'alamun Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala said in the book all you people with Iman, when the call for the prayer of the day of gathering <coughs> is made, which is <coughs> the day of Jumu'ah, uh, Allah says, uh, leave all your occupation, whatever is keeping you busy, whatever you're doing at that time, leave it. Uh, and you must hasten towards the remembrance of Allah. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah continues and he said that is better for you if only you knew. So Alhamdulillah, uh, we praise him and we thank him to give us the tawfiq and the ability to, to listen to this order of his and to come to his house on the day of gathering uh, to, towards the remembrance of Allah wa ta'ala. Um, as we announced a couple of weeks back, we will still be embarking on these uh, sections pertaining the uh, nikahs and marriages uh, in Islam because it is very important to understand the ahkam of sharia and the ahkams that the Prophet wasalam, has taught the ummah um, how to conduct ourselves uh, within the nikah and the reason the Rasulullah gave this is because Allah ordered him to do it. One of the declarations of faith or the declarations of Iman uh, in the Holy Quran, I'm sorry, in the, the Prophet وسلم, taught, <coughs> which is uh, also established from the Quran when you study the books of uh, Aqidah, uh, all the various Imam. imam uh, the Ash'ari Aqidah in particular, that is the one that is followed by the members of the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Imam al Ma'aturihi and Imam al Abu Hassan al Ash'ari, they give various proofs of the basis for our Aqidah. Uh, so, in any case, one of the declarations of faith uh, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the fifth declaration wherein Allah tabarak, uh, the, the Prophet Sallam taught us. <coughs> Uh, this concept of Iman Amantu Billahi Kama Huwa Bi Asma'ihi Wa Sifatihi Wa Qabil Tu Jami'a Ahkamihi That I have brought Iman I have believed in Allah And I believed in Allah Kama Huwa Bi Asma'ihi I believed in Allah The way He is Along with His 
uh, uh, names or sifati he and his attributes and then waqabil to jami'a ahkamihi and I, I have also accepted jami'a ahkamihi all of his ahkam to accept the ahkams of Allah is part of the declaration of uh, iman and so um, and, and, and that's why it's important that we need to have this kind of understanding that all these ahkams that we are revising, they are nothing but the murad of Allah, the, 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 the will and the desire of Allah upon his slaves, which it comes through his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, and then hence we will remind each other so that we can, uh, 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 we can uh, 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 practice Islam and follow the orders of Allah the way Allah wants it, not the way we want it. Yeah, that is a true, that is a true, uh, uh, to call ikhlas. Uh, when they ask uh, one of the awliya, Sister Nasha Amr al-Tijani, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, well, ikhlas, what is the reality of ikhlas? He said, uh, is to, uh, is to follow the orders of Allah and to stay away from his prohibitions in a way that Allah is pleased with it not in a way that the servant is pleased with it because in the relationship between Allah and the, and the servant is a, a, there, there is no comparison one is a creator, is a master, the other one is a creator, he is a slave. So you cannot say, bargain with Allah and say, I will only do this in this way when Allah wants you to do it in another way. Because you are created. Allah brought you into being from the time you were not there and he can annihilate you also any moment and you also know more after that. So that, that kind of relationship with the uh, servant of Allah to to the master uh, that is Allah Rabbul Izzat himself needs to always at all times be visible in how we deal with Allah Ta'ala and marriage is not only like I've been reiterating over the past few weeks marriage is not only the ahkams that we need to familiarize ourselves with but also the uh, the, the other different ahkams like uh, ahkams of business how to conduct business, if you, if you open a business, how do you deal with business? How does Allah want you to conduct yourself in business and as a business person? Uh, those ahkams that Allah has taught us in the Holy Quran. Allah revealed in the book and he said, um, Allah has made halal a business transaction, and he has made the riba usury or interest as haram. And that, that, that is one of the ahkams I'm just mentioning as an example that uh, as a human being you cannot live in this life without engaging in business because you need to do business to make a living, to support yourself, to support those that uh, you, 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 you are responsible to support to. And also as a human being you can't live in this life without being married because you need to have a spouse, you need to, uh, um, uh, what you call, procreate, uh, in a way in which Allah has ordained us that we do it and that is only through nikah and nikah itself has got its own ahkams and that's why uh, for us as believers we must always remind ourselves about the ahkams of Allah. Um, the, the, the last uh, session that I did was I delved uh, in a, uh, quite a number of points with regards to the, 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 the rights of the husband it's the, the, the rights of the wife from the husband. Um, and then there was a, a, a few that I actually left out. And the reason for that is because um, the, we will try and arrange a more uh, relaxed session where there can be a question and answer session and follow up through that. And then we'll be able to benefit fully from those, uh, from those points. But however, I do just want to highlight one more point uh, from that section is that uh, it, the, 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 the husband, it is upon him to, to learn the ahkams of, um, of hayd, hayd and istihada, all of those ahkams 
the husband must know them very well so that uh, he may be able to explain these ahkams to his uh, to his spouse right if the, if the husband does not have the knowledge of this ahkam then he must go and seek the knowledge of these ahkams so and then if he is unable to do it then the wife will be obligated to leave her home and to go and and and, uh, and, and learn those ahkams so that uh, she will be able to know uh, what uh, what to do in those circumstances according to according to the, the sharia um, uh, this the, the Sharia is imposed upon men to ensure that uh, he, his family is is taught about the the, the Islamic values, and uh, but the ulama have particularly singled out this point as one of the points that the um, the husband has to know. You can't say that no me I don't know this it is no. You you have to go and study and learn about these matters so that you can also understand uh, uh, what you call this uh, uh, what you call this uh, these ahkams and these rulings so there's a number of points that are mentioned here a number of ayats that are related to this point that i want to talk about but i think uh, what, whatever i'm highlighting now is just sufficient to pass the message and then you can do the rest in a more relaxed uh, uh, what you call setting the next section that i, I want to delve into is the section concerning the uh, uh, the, the rights of the husband now from the woman's uh, from the woman's side, and there are many, and we won't have time to go through uh, um, uh, all all of them. But we'll just go through a few hadith that uh, uh, give us guidance uh, with regards to this particular section, as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as uh, as uh, indicated in various uh, hadith. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, the first hadith I, I want to talk about is that. Um, the 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 right of the of the husband uh, uh, the the right of the husband from uh, from from the from the woman or from the wife major, majority of it bothers from the idea that the, hus the 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 wife must be obedient to the husband whatever the husband asks the wife to do. Uh, she must try to do it to the best of her ability, and uh, the, and this right and all the other rights, they actually emanate from this right in their different forms and different manifestations. The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, "Ayuma imra'atin matat wa zawjuha anha radin dakhalat jannah." Whenever a woman passes away and her husband is pleased with her. Uh, then she she she, uh, she will enter paradise. From this hadith, it was deduced that um, it, it it emphasized on the obedience of the wife towards the husband. That if the husband is not pleased with the woman and the woman had to pass away, so the opposite of it means that, that woman won't enter paradise. And that's why this hadith becomes. Um, relevant in this particular context. In another narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, um, "It is reported that a man, kana rajulun qad kharija ila safarin, he was traveling, and he left his uh, uh, his wife at home, and and had told his wife that she must uh, uh, she must stay at home and not move out. The exact words he used, uh, he said." Uh, um, don't uh, leave from the high place to the low place. This is in relation to where their home was based, and the low place that is referred to here um, is a is a place of her father. So, ila So the the. The woman uh, heard that her father got sick, yeah. and so she went. She sent a person to ask Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam whether she should go and visit her father. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fasta'adana. So she seek permission from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that can I break my husband's order to to go and visit my father. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded to the messenger back to and he says aati zau jaki. He said, "The Prophet uh, uh, obey your your husband. In other words, don't move from your house, even if your father is sick, that you want to go and visit." 
So it so happened for Martha. So her father passed away. Then the second time the woman first Amarat, first Amarat who? So she sent somebody to go and ask Rasulullah to see if can she go and be with the family and attend the, the uh, uh, whatever the proceedings that is happening there. Rasulullah gave the same response to the uh, to the messenger of this lady and he says, Aati Zawjaki follow and obey your husband and she remained in her house and then Fadufina Abuha and her father was buried and she was she could not go she could not go there fa arsala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ila ilaha yukhbiruha anna allah qad ghafara li abiha bi ta'atiha li zawjiha then after her father was buried rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent somebody to her house and said go and report to this woman that her father has been admitted to paradise uh, because on account of her obedience to her husband, Allah had forgiven all the sins of her father. So from this hadith, it is also deduced the, the, the heaviness of, and, uh, of, um, of uh, following uh, what you call um, the orders of the husband and the insistence of Rasulullah that even when your father was sick, even when your father had passed away, because this is what you, your husband said and your husband was away, so, um, of course, maybe if her husband was there, maybe the husband was going to say, no, come, let's go home. But, uh, because she inquired from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Rasulullah sallallahu is our teacher, so that is what uh, she advised the, uh, the, the lady. And the lady did as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had, uh, uh, had advised. Another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, So, when a, a woman completes her salawat, meaning the, 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 the uh, khamsuha, her five daily prayers. Wasamat shahruha, and she fast uh, the month of Ramadan, in other words, when the month of Ramadan comes, she observes the fast. Wahafidat farujaha, and she looks after her faraj. Faraj means her private parts, basically means that she guards her chastity. at zawjaha, and she obeys her husband. Dakhalat al Janna Rabbiha. Dakhalat al Janna Rabbiha. Then she will most certainly enter the paradise of her Lord. So, from this hadith, we see Rasulullah had mentioned the pillars of Islam, the fasting, uh, and, the, and the salah, uh, among the, in the same category as the woman obeying her husband, and the Prophet guaranteeing that that, that woman will enter her paradise. وَأَدَافَ طَاعَةِ الزَّوْجِ إِلَى مَبَانِ الْإِسْلَامِ um, Then another hadith of Rasulullah SAW mentioned and he says اِتَّلَعَةُ فِي النَّارِ فَإِذَا أَكْثَرَ أَهْلُهَا النِّسَاءِ I pass by the hellfire. Now this is referring to the incident on the day of Mi'araj. Then when I stumbled up upon, I saw the majority of its people, they were women. فَقُلْنَا then we said to the Messenger of Allah, um, in fact, the, in, in this phrase, it seems as if it was a woman who was asking Rasulullah this question. He says, Fakulna, lima ya'ati, lima ya Rasulullah, For what reason, O Messenger of Allah, why were there so many women? And then Rasulullah, um, uh, so, so she said, the Prophet said, Yukthirna li'ani wa yukthirna al ashir, because of their excessive cursing and the excessive. Um, uh, uh, in gratitude uh, towards uh, their partners, because uh, the, the 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 ulama who explains this hadith, uh, it is they explain it that uh, sometimes when the husband does like so many things, and then maybe there is one problem, and then the woman will act towards the husband as if the husband has never done any good to them, and that is the meaning of wakuf wayakfuruna al ashira. So this uh, Rasulullah indicated that that act on its own is an act that lands a lot of women into in, uh, what you call in, into the hellfire. So the there's, there's a number of uh, of rights uh, towards from the husband, but majority of them they border around the the, the following in the obedience of of the husband, so long as the husband is not ordering the woman to do that which is uh, against the Sharia. So, um, 
I think we'll stop here. I don't have my watch because um, mm -hmm. the time is, is gone. Inshallah, we will proceed with the other sections, uh, the other coming weeks. We will do the section on, on, on the raising of the, on the custody of the children as well as the, the ahkams of, uh, of, of talaq so that we, uh, we know exactly how to uh, conduct ourselves during the, 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 the process of talaq because talaq is something that uh, it is permissible to do in Islam although uh, it is uh, one of the acts that has been uh, disliked by Allah wa ta'ala However, we do need to discuss it because it does happen uh, uh, for necessary reasons. Uh, we pray Allah wa Taala that He fortify our marriages mm -hmm. and He give us the ability to follow the orders of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and His ahkams, and we be able to live uh, with uh, one another uh, uh, in a way that Allah wants, not in a way that we want. Mm -hmm.